Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. Bill, what we're talking about today is we're going back to insurance. These two hurricanes. Right. You know, and a lot of people are getting denied. You actually just did a video on it. Claims well, denied. Claims denied. Not homeowners insurance. Yep, claims denied. Claims are getting denied. So like people are like, hey, you know what? I got hit by a hurricane and I had a storm surge and I got flooding. And, and then they think they're covered, but they're really not covered. Right. You want to talk about that a little bit? Sure, we can talk about it. So what what were you saying in your video? We gotta go watch my video. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> but what's the big reason why most people are getting denied? No, so the, the, the premise of that is that there was a study done and it was in uh, 2023 and it was talking about how many insurance claims had been denied here in Florida by some of the bigger players. And it was surprising because it was upwards of 47% of insurance claims filed were denied for various was, reasons. Was it because of fraud? No, they gave a lot of reasons. So of course the insurance companies, which I totally understand, were like, well, you're cherry picking to make this look good, you know, for your study. Right. But they also, the insurance companies also indicated several reasons as to why things were denied. And it made sense. Like they, they were pretty black and white things. It, it totally made sense. So one of them was obviously was fraud. Right, of course. You know, if they, yeah. they know it's fraud, then they're gonna say no, or mm -hmm. they suspect it and they're gonna investigate it. So it just maybe took a little bit longer for the claim to get paid out. Right. Or it was that it was for a non-covered item. And examples of that would be um, your birdcage, like the screen enclosure that we're in right now. It's a non-covered item for certain insurance policies, so you have right, to Right, like, sure. I, don't, I don't think Citizens covers no. uh, Citizens birdcage. typically does not cover. Right. Um, do you have to make sure that you're, if that's something that you're worried about, because these things are expensive, so you have to make sure that they are covered. Um, other items would be, or other things that were causing denials were uh, not having the appropriate coverage. So in our storms that we recently had, people that were not in flood zones, typically, why would you buy flood insurance? True. I mean, it, look, it, look, look, logic, what, right? Look, look what happened in Sarasota, that whole community, nobody really had flood. It was what, a zone X or something like that? Right, I mean, Florida is all a flood zone. It's just, yeah. it, and X is technically a flood zone if we're really getting specific. It just means that it's not the, that your lenders typically don't require you to have flood right. insurance. Right, but these people that for years didn't get flooded. Right. Then we had a rain event and they ended up getting flooded. Right, well, it's not like it was an afternoon rain shower. You know, no, it was no, a pretty was... significant rain event um, that dumped a lot of water in a very, very short period of time. Uh, dare I say historic levels. Mm -hmm. <laughs> True. It's a lot of things get played out in the news too much. You know, they overuse certain words and then they lose their... Uh, their their meaning or their their purpose but that would be one of them right so why would you have it i mean most people like my house i, I don't have flood insurance because you know we're in that hundred year floodplain thing and we're pretty high and we're good to go but if something had happened maybe we would have been flooded well so. i'm going to tell you guys what's the most important thing and i said it on the past few videos of you know what you should look for when you're buying a house and i'll even say just now and we'll talk about it more later is elevation so basically behind me, I have water, but I'm not gonna get flooded. The, the neighborhood down, down the line is gonna get flooded before I get flooded, even though the water's pretty much going past my house because I'm at a higher elevation than what they are. Right. So well, let's talk about insurance, the, the chaos going on with insurance right now. Like, you know, I met so many people like, oh yeah, we had hurricane insurance, which basically it's not really hurricane, it's, it's wind. You know, they had wind insurance, like if something flew on their roof, you know, because mm -hmm. I was talking to the buyers. But they got storm surge, they got flooding. They got flooding. And they just think it's the same thing, and it was not. And that's one of the other things that is, it'd be a reason why you're getting denied because you didn't have the appropriate coverage. Right, so you have to look at your policies yeah. and talk to an insurance professional about it. Hey, do me a favor. In the meantime, consider subscribing. We're working on some really, really cool stuff. We would want you to miss it and hit the bell notification. So a lot of people think they, they were covered for this storm and they found out they're not. Right. You know, so you obviously we're not insurance providers, but that's one of those things that you really need to double check on. Make sure your coverage is what you think it is. And, you know, let's say 
if your house gets flooded or something backs up, make sure you're covered and mm -hmm. make sure that you have enough coverage. Oh, absolutely. So he, he is, you know, some people are saying, Bill, they're saying, you know, let's, we're going to go bare. Basically, bare is we're not going to have insurance. Right. So because it's not worth it. And I personally don't think it's it's worth it. I But I believe if it's really expensive and you can't afford it and you don't have a mortgage is doing something called a la carte. You know, get fire, theft, and liability. Because right. the, the big cost here in Florida is wind. Right. Is wind and flood. Is wind and flood. So... If you don't have a mortgage, just talk to your insurance person. Say, hey, could I do a la carte? I, I need fire, theft, and liability, the most common things. But And something on that, because you know, we keep saying this a lot, and I mentioned it in my video too, so I want to make sure I say it here. Mm -hmm. um, when we talk about flood insurance being expensive, we're talking coastal and by water, bodies of water, of rivers, course. things like that. We're not just, we're, when we say flood insurance, because call and get a quote and find out how much your flood insurance is. Now, I mean, obviously expensive is subjective. But when you're talking a house on the water versus a house that's not in a flood zone and it's got no body of water around you, there's a big difference there. So just look into it. So let's talk about what's causing the Florida housing crisis. Mm -hmm. You know, the first thing is the high premiums. You know, homeowners face some of the highest premiums in the nation at, with rates increasing significantly over recent years. Is that true? Yes, it is. Oh, yeah. We are probably one of the highest states for homeowners insurance might be i don't know i know california has wildfires and some other states but it's expensive here so that's a true statement yep frequent disasters is causing a crisis here too it says you know the, the state vulnerability their hurricanes flooding and other natural disasters make it a high risk area mm -hmm. driving up costs true yeah again a little bit subjective because we went so long without stuff but you know, now we're paying the piper per se. Yeah, and so we had two of them, and now they're talking about maybe a, a third one. I heard on the news, but I'm, I'm not, not even going to bring it up. I'm not. We're not. I'm not even entertaining that. Here's another problem that the insurance companies are having is reinsurance costs, because you think that right. you think that the insurance companies just carry the money and then they'll pay you out if there's a natural disaster. They actually get reinsurance. Right. Insurance companies have insurance. insurance. You know, and that their premiums have gone up. So who do you think they're going to pass it on to? They're they're going to pass it on to you, the consumer. So that's causing the insurance crisis to get even worse. Yep, because they raise their prices. So fraud and lit litigation. That's a big one. Yeah, but we you know we've enacted some different legislation and laws here that make it more difficult to do the fraudulent claims and to get into that litigation. So thing you're, where, you're talking about like assigned of benefits abuse, you know, people would. Well, yeah, but also where you sue your insurance company and then the lawyers get something like four or 20 times. It was a crazy astronomical amount that they could charge for fees and such. And then that way, you know, you'd get your whatever you needed fixed, but they would get some astronomical amount for their fees. So, oh yeah, well, you get a public adjuster, and the public adjuster, the higher, more money they get you, they take a percentage of it too. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, so interesting. That, you know, so, but it's a lot of people. What they did is before a lot of these rules changed, they signed. You know, they're like, oh, your roof, just assign the benefits to us. We'll take care of everything. And take care of your roof. Right, yeah, that's that's always dangerous when you're just signing it over to somebody um, to do that. So you don't, like, there's the difference between you signing a check over to somebody because the check gets cut to you, you cut the check, you then you sign the check over to them. That's different versus you just assign all your benefits over and then they kind of decide what they want to charge you. There were some stories, maybe we were talking about it, I don't remember the, all the premise on it, but somebody had done an assignment of benefits over and then that person didn't get what they wanted and then they filed a claim for a lien on the person's house because wow. the insurance didn't cover what they, you know, all their fees. Oh, uh, that's insane. It was, it was some crazy, I'll see if I can't find that article. That was a pretty good one. Here's another problem in Florida too. Everybody's going to citizens and citizens is really supposed to be a insurer insurance last resort, last resort. Yeah. And they're starting to get rid of people because they're like, you're just coming here because of cost, but it's very, very basic insurance. Right. I mean, if you, 
depending on what you need and what you have, I totally understand that the reason that you would go there. But again, that goes back to what we were talking about right when we started this conversation, which is making sure you have enough coverage. That's a huge thing. Um, you know, my example would be very simple. If you have an insurance claim that only pays out $20,000 and your house had $30,000 worth of damage, you might not have enough money to pay because you have to come off your deductible as well. And then you might not have enough money to pay to get your house fixed. Yeah, but we've been talking about insurance now for two years. Yep. Okay, on this channel. Um, so we've been talking about it and they changed the rules, but I just got my insurance bill. It's, it's not getting any cheaper. It's getting a lot more expensive. I don't see things getting better. Am, am I being just negative that yeah. things, okay. I'm just kidding. All right, I'll be negative. All right, so that's fine. I'm being, ne I'm being negative about homeowner's insurance. No, I'm just easy. No, but I get do it. You, do you see yourself that it's gonna get better? Because I know you show homes and you know, people you know from out of state are like, oh, what's the property tax? What's the property tax? And I, I heard you say this many times. Forget about the property taxes. Let's go find out how much insurance is. <laughs> yeah, because it's true. It, depending on where you're going, insurance is a huge thing. That's the number one. Property taxes, we can do the math on relatively simply because it's a known number and we can look that up. That's very that's that's relatively easy. But when it comes to insurance, that's a whole. When you're adding insurance and your taxes together, plus interest rates and all that, you know, you, you could be putting yourself into a, a very Here, tough position. I'll tell you guys a quick story. This just happened two days ago. I was doing an inspection on a coastal home, on a canal home, mm -hmm. okay? Right over here. During the inspection, the buyer was there. Their insurance agents called them, okay? I'm three quarters of the way through the inspection. Mm -hmm. And they were talking to the broker and the broker says, hey, I got you a quote for insurance. Mm -hmm. It was $13,600. Oh and the guy's like, what are you talking about $13,600? He goes, I was planning like $1,200 or for the age from out of state. Obviously, I don't talk to them about insurance. Right, right. But this happened while I was there and the, and the guy is like, 13, he goes, no, he goes, I can't afford that. Right. I had a budget maybe with everything, three grand the high. And mm -hmm. like, no, you're gonna be paying at least $1,000 a month, no matter where you yeah. go. Literally, he hung up the phone and he says, Jimmy, you already paid. You're good. Don't worry about the inspection. The, this deal is dead. Oh, my God. You know, and I'm sorry. I got to say that that's going to fall on that individual's realtor. Just going to be honest. I'll take the flack. I don't care. Because if you're not having that conversation, well, let me put it this way. If that person's realtor did not have that conversation, then it falls on the realtor. I'll be fair with that statement. You yeah. know, because sometimes people just don't listen or they don't believe what we say. So I don't know the whole story, well, he, but if well, they didn't have that conversation, that's the realtor's fault. Well, he, here's here's the thing that they made the mistake. They went, they put an offer on this house. They did a three day inspection period. <sighs> OK, so within three days, that means like somebody like me has to go there, do the inspection. If there's any problems, they get back out of the mm -hmm. deal. OK. So they went under contract. I went there, I moved things around. I went there the following day. So that really did give them a lot of time to shop for insurance. Okay, so here's the thing, here, here, truthfully. First off, when it comes to this insurance thing and then trying to figure out where you're going, when you're shopping, you don't just go from, I'm buying a house on the coast on the water and then go, well, I might buy a house in Wesley Chapel 35 miles away. You right. kind of are in the same general vicinity, right? Please, if you've watched this channel, I say it all the time. Do not just start typing stuff in online to get your insurance quotes. No. That's the worst thing that you can do, and it's generally not going to be accurate. Pick up the phone and call an insurance provider that's local. If you're, hopefully your realtor's got somebody, that doesn't mean you can't shop after the fact. Get at least one quote. If the insurance provider says, well, I can't give you any kind of information until I have the four point in the wind, just tell them you need, just assume that it has no clips, whatever, it's very bare bones. They can give you a ballpark of the house that you're looking right. at, because you're shopping, they need an address, right? But if you're gonna go tour three houses, pick one that's on the water, because you're generally looking in the same area. 
All right, that's good advice. Give them one and have them look at it and just say, hey, just assume the roof is middle of the road and it's, you know, because you can kind of judge that. And sometimes it's in the descriptions for the, um, for the listing. That way you have an idea what the insurance is. And if, like in this situation, if it's a, I'm not going to, whether a three-day inspection period or a seven-day or a 10-day. Well, that's why they didn't shop because it was such a short they, 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 they the next be, day. Yeah, they need to know the person that they're going to have. When you're going, when you go under contract, especially if you're going to go with a three-day inspection period, you yeah. better have your working shoes on for that first day after you're, you're, uh, con you get under contract because you're going to be, you're not going to be at work. You're going to be spending your days getting everything done right away because you don't have a lot of time right to get stuff done that's a lot of work for you as the buyer to get information on now you can always pick insurance down the road but get at least a quote so you know you can shop to try to get a better deal somewhere else but just get but a quote. you know why i feel bad for these people too because they moved you know they're moving to florida mm -hmm. because they want to live on the coast so after they hung up the phone and they canceled the inspection well it wasn't really canceled it was almost done now they're realizing they're moving to Florida and they can't afford to live anywhere along the coast because of insurance. Mm -hmm. So that was their whole goal. Mm, I want to live on the stinks. water. I want to buy a boat. I want to go fishing. You know, I want to... Now they, they still could move to Florida, but according to them, they have to move inland, like way inland. You know, I don't know about what. Well, but, and again, uh, course, way inland is subjective. Yeah, but that, I'm talking about 10, 15 miles. Okay, no, it's not. That's not way inland. But for them, they were coming down here to live actually on the water. Right. They wanted to enjoy that. Holy smokes! Look at that yeah, sunset. Because, Let's get on the boat. Yeah, because that, that's that's what sells people. They're, they're they're on Zillow and they're like looking at, <laughs> oh, look at this beautiful house on the water. And what, what's the first photo you see on Zillow? You see a dock. With water and maybe they put always they put a dolphin jumping around, you know, <laughs> the photos on Zillow. Right. Go to Zillow right now and look at waterfront. Realtor.com. Go to Realtor.com. Uh, go to Realtor.com. Any of them, I'm just messing around. And, and look, look at the photos, and I guarantee if you look at waterfront, they're gonna have a picture of a manatee or a dolphin. It just it just happens. I don't know. So. But it, it's, and it should be the second photo, not the first. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying, yeah, what I'm saying is, it's just like. Think about it. Say, okay, what is insurance going to cost? There is a crisis going on, and I don't see a solution. Neither do I. We've talked about this on many occasions. Um, you know, at some point, some sort of a, you know a, a state governmental thing is going to have to come into effect. And I know the governors work on that. You know, when, because the more choice we have, the lower our rates go. You know, as far as insurance goes. But at this point, I just don't know what could happen and this could become our new norm um obviously everything goes up every year that's just i mean that's the cycle of life right so my house in hudson brand new 18 feet up in the air they still want ten thousand dollars in insurance with, yeah. with flood because there'll be a mortgage okay so and i keep telling them the same thing well if i get flooded that means the water went up 18 feet above the land okay and say i'm a four foot i'm like floor is in trouble so because of that cost i have no choice mm -hmm. but maybe figure out how to pay cash for the place or pull money out of my primary home mm -hmm. something and then go a la carte there because believe it or not i was getting quotes fire theft and liability on a brand new house okay even in that zone and it was like under two grand right in in that area you're definitely gonna it's gonna be the flood and hurricane stuff that's but gonna it was really under, it really was like, hit it, was, it was like one quarter ago was like 1680 1700 yeah and and i'm like so the rest thousands of dollars more is for wind and flood and i'm like i'm not gonna get flooded and you know, there's underneath. There's nothing underneath. It's on stilts. Right, right. It's just a waste, a waste of money. But if you're planning to move to Florida to be on the coast and have your boat there and put it in the water and just go, think about insurance. <laughs> you have to. And when you're making these decisions, you know, it's it's the fun part is the shopping part. 
you know, but please just make sure whoever you use to help you find a house, before you fall in love with a house in an area, do some research on it, talk to an agent and actually make a plan. It's really important. I guarantee you that 60% of the people that have the desire to come to Florida and live in the water will, once they realize the insurance situation, are, it's just gonna be a dream. They're not gonna to move to, to live on the water. Not because they don't want to, they just can't afford it. It's just, it's just it, that's the facts. At the end of the day, who's gonna live on the water? It's people with money. <laughs> it's just- right. Well, I mean, it, it, it's what it's boiling down to. It's everybody wants to be on the water. So what it's the supply and demand, high demand, right? Mm -hmm. Limited supply. Everything's eventually just going to go up and you are unbelievably susceptible to mother nature. It, yeah. So look at it. Like my neighborhood that got wiped out in Hudson, we were selling a piece of property that I own. We took it off the market because now investors came in. They bought three or four houses just on the on the, on my block, yep. and they're going to knock them down. They don't care what. Then they're going to build million dollar stilt homes. So that in five years, my property is going to increase in value. Right, you're gonna you're gonna have a significant increase in value. Right, because if it's on, especially if, since it's on stilts, so the stilt homes are going to be like you could have a fifteen hundred square foot stilt home, and you could have a two thousand dollar ranch sitting on the ground mm -hmm. right next to each other and i guarantee you that ranch the insurance is going to be higher and i guarantee you that the value is going to be in my opinion 40 percent less than the stilt house oh significantly number one you have an old 70s 60s right. and 70s style house versus a you know 2024 2025 stilt house you know, built with all the new codes, hurricane rated, so on and so forth, and impact window, so on. It, it, you're not comparing, an app. That's, that's not a comparable. Mm -hmm. But what we're talking about is just straight up the land value of that area is gonna go through the roof. Mm -hmm. Because people are gonna, the, 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 the single story ranches are eventually just gonna hit a plateau where they're just not gonna increase anymore. And the only increase that you're gonna get is on land value. Do you think insurance companies are going to be like, hey, you got flooded twice already in the past two years. We're not going to, we're not going to insure you anymore. I don't know. I, I would not be shocked if we started seeing stuff like that actually happen to where they're like, listen, this is the second time or it's going to be so astronomical for you to get insurance. Mm -hmm. But that's when you roll over into the citizens insurance. And then. It, it, but do you think citizens will say we're not going to insure you? I don't know. I mean, that's the 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 purpose of citizens was for people who could not get insurance, not for people who just wanted less expensive insurance. But that's what it's becoming. But that's, yeah, but that's why they've started to- And, they're, to and the citizens people. is increasing their rates quite a bit. So they're like, hey, you know what? We're not, this company over here is, is almost the same price as us. Go with right, them. because they, they've started to require flood insurance. Yeah. You know, to protect themselves because they have to remain solvent. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, that's today's video, just, you know, insurance you're moving to florida please be careful and just think about insurance first yeah hey check out this video right here i picked it out just for you guys i know you'll like it and do me a favor so you don't forget about those uh, other videos that we're working on subscribe it takes a second click that button and we'll talk to you in the next one thank you and watch this video again see you on the next video thanks bye